Hi again, students. We are here for the second lesson. Just to recall that we, the first lesson that we did, we showed calculation for one ingredient that is from a pure source for preparing divided powders. In this example, we are going to be calculating for more than one ingredient, more than one active ingredient from pure sources to prepare our divided powders or charts. And of course, we are going to be using a least weighable quantity. This example states, calculate the ingredients necessary for preparing the prescription below using the stock of hydrochlorothiazide and trying to make pure powders. Given the least weighable quantity of the balance used is 150 milligrams. I'd just like to say here that our least weighable quantity is dependent on the instrument that you're using. Um, our electronic balances all have different sensitivity requirements and depending on your own acceptability in terms of error, the least weighable quantity can be calculated. Many times your um, electronic balance will tell you what the sensitivity requirement is. And depending on your sensitivity of um, weighing that you would like to have in your establishment, if you want to accept an error of 10%, then your least weighable quantity is going to reflect that. Generally speaking, for compounding, our error is going to be plus or minus 5%. That means we're 95% sure that whatever we're weighing is correct. If you're using a torsion balance, generally speaking, torsion balances that are used, these are class A balances that are used in the pharmacies way back in the days, way back in my time, students. The least weighable quantity was 120 milligrams. So you couldn't weigh anything less than 120 milligrams. All right? Okay, so we have this, this prescription and we are going to examine the prescription. We recognize that there are two ingredients here, hydrochlorothiazide and triamterene. Both are diuretics used for hypertension. So therefore, you would want to think that the chart that you're making is a fixed dose combination product. What does that mean? It means that the dose of each of these active ingredients are fixed for each chart. So the dose for hydrochlorothiazide is 20 milligrams and that of triamterene is 40 milligrams per chart. Notice MFT chart indicates that each chart is going to be compounded in such a way that each of them consists of 20 milligrams hydrochlorothiazide and 40 milligrams triamterene and you're going to be sending or dispensing 10 doses. So Ms. Binge is to get 10 doses. Because we know we're working with powders and we expect some loss, we are going to be calculating for 40% in excess. So this means that we are going to be calculating four, for four extra charts. So the total charts to be extemporaneously compounded is going to be 14. We then have to determine the active ingredient per chart. Well, we had already established that, which is hydrochlorothiazide, 20 milligrams, trying to mean 40 milligrams. We also need to determine for each drug, the total amount that is needed for the 14 charts. 20 milligrams is for one chart, so for 14, it's 280 for the hydrochlorothiazide. And for triamterene, similarly, 40 milligrams times 14 is going to give you 560. So this means in order to com com um, compound our 14 charts, we need 280 milligrams of hydrochlorothiazide pure powder, 560 milligrams triamterene. We're gonna to have to determine if the total active ingredients needed for the 14 charts is weighable because we're gonna to have to weigh them, mix them together, and then package them in um, 10 individual wraps. So therefore we have to determine that. And yes, they're both weighable. And the source of our active ingredients is gonna be pure powders. 
Next, we're going to have to determine if powder needed for each chart is weighable. Now, upon mixing the 280 milligrams and the 560 milligrams of our active ingredients together by a process called geometric dilution, we get a total of 840 milligrams of powder formulation. This 840 milligrams is required for 14 charts. But remember, students are not making the 14 charts together all at once. We can only weigh one chart at a time. So therefore, if you can only weigh one chart at a time, we need to know how much of the powder we have to use to package in each of those charts. In order to determine that, we have to divide 840 by 14. And we got 60 milligrams. And so unfortunately, is not weighable. So this means that we are going to have to bulk up or add a sufficient amount of diluent to this 840 milligrams of powder to make it weighable such that when we divide two by 14 charts, it is weighable. So therefore, we're going to need diluent for this um, compounding. Next, we're going to choose the amount of powder that each chart is going to weigh. And as a result of doing this, we will also determine what will be the total powder mass for our 14 charts. We need to know that we are going to let each chart weigh greater than or equal to the least weighable quantity, which is 150 milligrams. Since one chart cannot be 60 milligrams, as it's not weighable, we are going to let each chart weigh 150. I'd like to also um, reiterate here again that you don't necessarily have to let your chart be the least weighable quantity. It can be more than that. Certainly not less, but it can be more. But again, we have to gauge between economics, whether or not we're going to um, use a lot of our diluent and charge the patient, or are we going to absorb all of that extra cost? So we try to be as conservative as possible. So why not use the least weighable quantity? So if one chart will weigh 150 or contain 150 milligrams of powder, then the 14 charts will contain 2,100 milligrams of total powder mixture. Just bear in mind that this 2,100 milligram total powder mixture contains the 560 triamterene active ingredient plus the hydrochloric acid 280 milligrams plus an X amount of diluent, which is what we are going to find now. So in order to find the diluent, we'll have to add both of the active ingredients subtracted from the total powder mixture to get 1,260 milligrams of diluent. So this is your new formula for your um, hydrochloric acid trying to divided powder. It means that you're going to weigh 560 milligrams triamterene, 280 milligrams hydrochloric acid, and 1,260 milligrams of diluent. You're going to mix them homogeneously using the process of geometric dilution. And then from that, once you have a homogeneous mixture, you're going to weigh separately 10 portions of 150 milligrams of powder and package in chart papers and dispense to the patient. Now you may say, Miss, why are we only separately packaging 10 portions? Because the prescription requires us to make 10 portions. But why are we making 14? We are making 14 because we are accounting for loss. So while we are making for 14 charts, we are only packaging 10. Okay? And this is the standard um, instruction that usually goes on a um, powder chart in this case. Now, if you want to confirm if each chart, if each 150 milligram portion of that mixture will contain the amount of drug that you are stating that the patient should get, we can always do this. Now, this is optional. Chanterine 560 milligrams is what we use for all of our 14 charts. And we're mixing it with hydrochloric acid and the diluent, and we're going to share out 
10 portions of 150 milligrams of that mixture. We want to know if this 150 milligram mixture contains the 40 milligrams of trimetering that the prescription is saying that the patient should get. We can test this theory. If 560 milligrams of trimetering is in 2,100 milligrams of mixture, then 40 milligrams, which is what is required, will be in X. A simple cross multiplication will indicate that the patient will get 150 milligrams of the mixture. Again, you can also double check with the hydrochlorothiazide. Remember, we weighed 280 milligrams to make our mixture. If 280 milligrams is contained in 2,100 2, milligrams of mixture, this is incorrect, sorry, then 20 milligrams of the hydrochlorothiazide will be contained in X of the formulation. Again, we are going to get the 150. Does this mean then that I have to weigh 150 milligrams of the mixture twice for the person to get the triamterene and the hydrochlorothiazide? Absolutely not. It's a fixed dose combination dosage form. Therefore, what that means is that each 150 milligram mixture or portion will contain both 40 milligrams of triamterene and 20 milligrams of hydrochlorothiazide. Okay, so there's no need for you to weigh one, two, 150 milligram portions for them to get hydrochlorothiazide and triamterene separately because they're all combined in the same mixture. So this is optional, you don't have to do it, but if it gives you the peace of mind that yes, what I'm doing is correct, then you can go ahead to show that each portion that you made or each portion that you are instructing your technician or, or, or yourself to weigh out is going to contain the drug you want the patient, the person to get. Please note that this 1,600, 1,680 milligrams is an error. It should be 2,100 milligrams. My apologies.